afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. It's Lisa Corum here with Ed Carson, and on today's show, we've got some pretty well-known names on the list. We're going to talk about Disney as well as Netflix, Lululemon, and Ulta Beauty. But before we do that, let's analyze the overall market. Taking a look at the major indexes, we had the Nasdaq close up six tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 up about a half a percent, the Dow up four tenths of a percent. So you know up across the board, but we've kind of just been hanging around sideways. The Nasdaq is still below the 50-day line. Yeah, and the Dow and S&P are just above. I mean, it's been a news-driven market, and we really haven't had that much news yeah. for the broader market, so we're sort of pausing after a nice run. Obviously, if we take off, nobody will remember this. So, I mean, it's you know, it's, sometimes you don't want to get too caught up on it. Markets right. are sort of hanging there. It's at a sort of interesting point. You know, maybe we won't get news on trade until the G20 meeting later this month. So it, it, we may be in a holding pattern, but who knows? Exactly. Uh, but a one word that could be used to describe what we're seeing now, which uh, if you watch the podcast or listen, listen to or watch, we do have a video version too, uh, would be constructive, that it's constructive action here after, uh, you know, several days of big gains that we saw. This could provide an opportunity for some stocks to set up. Yeah, for I mean, investors to get in. Get some more handles, some bases to complete. I mean, some of these stocks we're going to look at have, have been forming some short bases. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at a few individual names, starting off with Disney, a strong gain for that stock today. It closed up about 4.4% above average volume. And the relative strength line is hitting a new high already, even before the stock breaks out. We have Morgan Stanley uh, coming out saying that it expects Disney to have uh, over 130 million subscribers by 2024 between its Disney Plus service that's launching later this year, ESPN Plus, and Hulu. So, I mean, that's a pretty uh, quick ramp up. Pretty quick ramp up. I mean, and so Disney really ran up in, in you know, the stock ran up in April, so really strong run. Pause, didn't really fall during the correction, and, you know, it's looking set to go. This was clearly the best performer in the Dow, one of the top performers in the S&P 500 today. You know, it's sort of transformation, transformational. It's not that the numbers are that great if you look at the fundamentals, but it's really changing. It seems like, you know, okay, you start going to value this as a streaming company. I mean, this is, it's a very different prospect because um, Netflix has a much higher valuation mm. than, say, Disney in terms of, like, you know, P.E. ratio. If Disney becomes seen that way, it really can change the game that way. Yeah, well, shares are just less than 1% uh, below that potential buy point here at 142.47. Uh, so we'll have to see if it can continue those gains and break out. Yeah. All right. And you mentioned Netflix, Ed. So let's go ahead and compare that chart to the one that we just saw. And it's a pretty different story. So you can just see right there on the chart that it's telling the story that Disney is going to be quite a competitive threat. Yeah. I mean, the, the chart, the stock price has sort of been moving sideways, maybe folding and going a little bit down the last few days. So that's not too dramatic. But, you know, relative to the market, Netflix has not been performing well. It hit a five-month low today, the RS line, and it's just sort of been fading, you know, where it just, you know, it was a big winner last year, and, you know, there's a lot of great prospects. It's, it's huge. It's going to continue to grow. But Disney is a competitor. It just seems like it's, it's, it's a little bit, it's a little, it's, it's a game changer for Netflix as well. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, you talk about not outperforming the market. You could just look at that. Not only is just the stock moving sideways, but the relative strength line it tells you that it's actually underperforming a little bit. So always good to get that uh, that secondary indicator in there. Yes, for absolutely. Deepening that analysis. And now let's pivot our attention to Lululemon, uh, which did gain, uh, was an early gainer today, but those gains faded after its quarterly earnings report after the bell yesterday. So this is a great example of you know, even though you see a stock gap up in the morning, you really want to take a look at that intraday chart to give you a clue as to maybe how it might close for the day. Yeah, I mean, one of the issues is that, you know, if, when you see a stock breaking out right at the open, you know, we, we, we've been saying, you know, maybe you shouldn't buy it right away, you know, you, because you want to wait maybe for the first few minutes. This is an intraday chart. You know, it busted out beyond a buy point right at the open. The first few minutes, it got over 182. You know, it was really nice action, and then, but it fizzled right away, it came mm -hmm. back down, and really never came back. I mean, it, you know, I had this and that. So five-minute bar or the first hour high is often a way to just to be a little safer. Yes, sometimes stocks will open high and just keep on running, but you want to avoid situations. Like this. Like this. And again, you know, Lulu could turn around. Sometimes a, a breakout fizzles, and then the next day, you know, more analysts come out or whatever, it, you know, then say, no, no, it is going to go higher, and it can work. But 
this was disappointing action. That's right. I, I think it's great to have these strategies. So whether you know you're you're looking at these breakouts on earnings, you're looking at the options. I think looking at this five minute chart, uh, we've seen, and you know we base <laughs> our uh, you know analysis on data. And what we've seen in history is if you are looking at this five minute chart, that can oftentimes tell you a lot. Uh, at least about that day's action. Yeah, at least about that day. And so that this was an important day. <laughs> All right. Well, moving on, let's talk about Ulta Beauty because it is closing in on a buy zone. It just retook its 50-day moving average and was able to uh, notch up a 2% gain today. So uh, what are your thoughts on this chart? Well, it's actually, we're calling it a double bottom. We put it on the leaderboard watch list today. So the middle of that W, just 10 cents above that, uh, you know, that's that would be the buy point. It's almost sort of clearing a little downtrend there. That would be interesting as well. If you look a few weeks ago, it had earnings. Boy, was that a shakeout. I mean, that yeah. stock plunged at the open, but, you know, almost to the 200-day line, but then rallied to close higher. That was a just a sort of crazy action. Yeah, it's a nice supporting action. Nice supporting action. It was, I'm sure if you had that stock, uh. you'd be like, oh, my goodness, that'd be really hard to hold and that kind of move. But so that's, that's interesting. Ulta's been a great performer over the years. The relative strength line, has sort of been moving sideways, um, you know, which for a while wasn't so great, you know, but did okay during the correction in the yeah. last few weeks. So, you know, if that breaks out, that's definitely one to watch. We wrote about that in Estee Lauder. So those are a couple of beauty stocks that are acting well. Yeah, and Ulta is in the IBD 50. So uh, we like looking at the IBD 50 because it uh, l lets you know essentially how a lot of the top growth stocks are doing. And compared to leaderboard, which is more hand-picked, uh, the IBD 50, there, there's an algorithm that, that goes into it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an algorithm, and it's large enough that you get a, maybe a broader picture. Sometimes you can see, wow, look at all these names, you know, like mm -hmm. you, know, you can start seeing the sectors. So it's a really good way to look and see where all the real, real strength is. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for watching today. And I mentioned the podcast earlier, so make sure you go to investors.com slash podcast for the new episode of Investing with IBD, which just dropped today. Our guest this week was Charles Harris. He talked about a, a contrarian style that he uses for buying stocks, so he details that in the podcast. So again, make sure you go check that out. And we also have a webinar coming up for you next Tuesday, How to Trade with the Trend. Uh, and it's a leaderboard focus, so make sure you go to investors.com slash webinar for all of the details on that. Thanks again so much for joining us today, and we'll be right back here tomorrow.